Hi, Jonathan Pickup. Welcome to my podcast 120. I'm going to have a look at some plug-in objects from a company called Landrew Design and there's their website LandrewDesign.com and I'm here with Andrew Dunning, the guy who's actually made all of these objects. Uh, now we're looking at Andrew's screen. Hi Andrew, how you doing? I'm doing great Jonathan, it's good to have some time with you. Well it's really cool, I've been looking at your plugins on uh, the the internet and I've seen some they look really cool, the photos, you know, the, the images you've got, but I'm dying to see how they work. Could, could you show us, please? Absolutely. Uh, what I'll do is hit some high points of some of the tools this afternoon, um, but I'm going to start off with a model showing them all working together. Everything on the screen except for the floor is a Landry Design plugin object. The floor is just an extrusion. Uh, Probably the model that's going to grab you the quickest is the one with your face on it, Jonathan. <laughs> and this is a VS4 projection object. It's a rear screen projection. The other tool in this model that is a, a video object is this one right here. I'll deselect it so you can see the object itself. All of those objects make up what we call VS4 LED. That's a, uh, an LED array. In the industry, we call those VersaTubes. Uh, all of the staging objects are from our staging tool set. These rectangular decks here, as well as the round ones, are called stage decks. They even have little casters on the legs if you'd like. And then these step units are called stage steps. And unlike the other uh, Vectorworks objects, these are entertainment style. This is what you'd see in an arena, for example. The curtains that you see, this blue one in the background, um, as well as this round one, which you kind of see center stage here, are soft goods objects. Um, this one's opaque, and this one actually has a scrim texture applied to it, and the tool does that on the fly for you. So those are the tools working together. I'm going to get rid of this drawing uh, so that we can look at something a little bit easier to see and we're going to look at the tools one by one. Andrew, the other thing gonna... that I'm sorry, Andrew, I, I, those um, stage things—they look really detailed. They are more detailed than the uh, spotlight stage piece, so that you can do counts. So, like you demonstrate in your worksheet um, class, um, you can do wheel counts and leg counts and things like that. Goodness me. That sounds so really they're cool. more detailed to give you those counts, but they're not so detailed that it's going to totally kill a drawing. Okay, so we're we're in uh, we're in a different drawing now, and the black background is left over from the other. And Jonathan, I don't know if you show your users using scripts to toggle things, but I've got a quick toggle to get rid of the black background, and we already have. Uh, a VS4 projection object placed. We'll let the object info palette populate itself. Two things that I'm really excited about with this tool. One of them I don't know if a lot of users really use, and that's this coverage zone toggle. If we turn on coverage zone and we zoom out, here's the optimal viewing area for that screen. And you as a user can define do you want to use the screen's width, the height, whatever as a reference and you can define how many degrees off center is okay as well as what the multiplier of that reference is to give you these two reference lines. Sorry Andrew, I don't want to spend too much time on each individual tool but are you saying that if you've got a, a large auditorium you can put this object in and you can tell which seats would be able to look at that screen? Yes, cool. absolutely. And what I'll do here is uh, Let's say that for uh, seeing your face on the screen, eight times the width is OK. Mm -hmm. We're doing a detailed presentation, so five times the width is going to be more appropriate. And we can see in a 150-foot deep room, we're not going to be covering our room the way we want to. So we know we need to pick a little bit bigger screen. And by going with a screen that's 15 feet tall by 20 feet wide, you can see we're starting to fill that room a lot better. That's pretty important stuff for a designer, I imagine. Absolutely. I did a project about a year ago where I had to do this 
to cover 5,000 people, but there were columns all over the place in the room. So I had to use this tool to be able to see who can see the screen, where are the columns in the way, things like that. Um, one feature that's in our tools that's not in those that's included with, uh, with Spotlight is an option of how you place the projector. If we come over here, the Spotlight tool places a projector based on a lens value. And you still have your, that option here. You can also place the projector based on distance where you actually punch in what, what the distance is, and then the tool will recommend a lens for you. Or you can drag the projector around, and it'll give you a, re a lens reference. A lot of hotels like that because they're very confined as to where they can hang things. So it lets them be able to order lensing appropriately. OK? Yep. So that's VS4 projection. I'm going to get rid of all these things. We're going to look at VS4 LED. And this again is for creating LED arrays. Here's what the icon looks like. Mm -hmm. And if we click into the drawing, you can see the ghost image. You can see it as we set a rotation. And I'm going to go ahead and, and click some settings here in the uh, preferences dialog. We're going to choose tubes. And again, I mentioned the VersaTube brand. There are others. We're going to say we want five tubes wide by two tubes high. Horizontal spacing, we're going to leave it a foot. And we're going to expand the vertical spacing a little bit, let Vectorworks do some math for us. And once the tool is thought a little bit, it's a lot going underneath the hood. But you can see it just created an array of objects for us. And you can create tubes or tiles or uh, webs, lots of different options there. And it will map the image across the objects, taking into account all this negative space. So you could, so so, sorry, Andrew, did you just say that an image is then applied to all of those tubes? Yes. And is spaced across them? Yes. So if you space them all close together, you'd see like for example you had my face but it could be like a football team or something like that so so you could take a photograph of a football team and stretch it across all of these tubes and it would have a bit on each one yes like i'm going to grab this bridge at night we'll go ahead and take the time to let it render seeing that we're going to have to redo this anyway and when we let it render you can see that it has taken into account all the negative space and so it's if, you, if you space the them up, it, it's more readable then? Yeah, if we reduce the space, right now it's one foot centers. Let's make them three inch centers. And we come back in. You can see that it's more legible. That's cool. And in, in reality, this product uh, being used on a stage is not going to be nearly this resolution. But at least it gives you an idea, you know, for your client, what's going, what your stage is going to look like. So the idea of these tools that you're creating is that it's going to be really quick to visualize yes. to your clients all the things that you want to put in there: the tubes, the, the the video screens. You can check the area of the video screen. So it should be really quick to yes. to do one of these presentations to a client. Absolutely. And even for this object, it takes a little bit for Vectorworks to generate. If you had to do that on your own, that might take you an hour or two of work, whereas Vectorworks will do it in a few seconds. So every presentation, you're going to save yourself, what, several hours of work? Absolutely. And I, I created most of these tools because I wanted to be more productive in generating those presentations for my clients. So they were created, I'll admit, a little selfishly, but when I realized that other users could use them, we started making them available, and now we've got users in 23 countries.